my final gambit is uh, I call it the firing line. I'm going to fire at you some names. You just tell me if they're cool, not cool. If there's a little funny story. I know we're obviously really tight for that time. We've gone way over. But I'm going to give you maybe a dozen or so names and you tell me uh, what you think of them. And the first one is Playboy Buddy Rose. Great talent. Great talent. Uh, lost, lost to his demons. Was a great talent. I remember him. Uh, George Gadaski used to let him set up the ring when he was uh, Paul Pershman. He used to drive to set up the ring for uh, George Gadaski. And then if, after he did, because uh, he'd do it for free, he'd let him work out in the ring. And I, I'd watch him take, you know, he'd take beautiful bumps, have great matches. And he wasn't even, uh, before he even, before he was even, if Vern saw that, he would have pulled the rest of his hair out. Or he would have pulled, <laughs> pulled Buddy's, he would have pulled Buddy's hair out. And Gadaski's. Uh, Mill Mascaris. Good guy. Protected his mask. Angelo Mosca and I were always teasing him. He, he, he'd always have his mask on, and, you know. So, he'd, hey, Aaron, you know, and his name or, you know, or when he'd be up in a restaurant or something, he'd, hey, Mill. And they just, you know, Mexican wrestlers, they, 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 their mask is an extension of their, their body. He, he was, he was good though. Good talent. Big star in Mexico. <laughs> big, big movie star. Wrestling star, Los Angeles, Mexico. All the Latinos loved him. Uh, Larry Zabisco. Good guy. Good guy. Never was around. He was in Georgia for a little while. Um, I think he came out of, I don't know if he, I don't think he, he'd, uh, I think it was be pre, before the, before he turned on Bruno, but he was, he was funny guy. He'd, uh, Ride with him. He had the, he liked the Frank Sinatra and the, the big band music. You know, everybody else's the rock and roll. He was he was a East Coaster, East Coast fella, but good guy, talented. Turned out to be a great, uh, great interviewer, great promo man, and a good man in the ring. Uh, we already uh, established Outback Jack earlier, so I'm going to skip straight on to uh, Dennis Stamp. Oh, he was a guy. I worked out. He he had the ring. I was in Minneapolis. I trained he and uh, Nick Buckman, the young, younger brother, uh, were breaking in at the same time. And Dennis was a good amateur from uh, North Dakota. And um, I'd, I'd, I'd go someplace and then I'd hang around with the ring guy because they were the only guys my age. Everybody else was, you know, Robinson or Bachwinkle or Larry. They all had, you know, old, had families and, you know, in the mid, mid to late middle 30s and stuff. And I was, I was just in my early, just, just turned 20, you know, barely a 20, 21, barely, barely legal drinking age. So I, I ended up hanging around with those guys and the Dennis Bockwinkle and he had the ring or a ring for, for Vern. So, you know, he was a, he turned into a good, he was a good wrestler. He just didn't, uh, went more on the wrestling and stuff, never wanted to go with the body. And of course in those days, it wasn't a body, but you know, the cosmetics, Cosmetics are always uh, are always always welcome, especially in drawing money. And he didn't want to uh, he didn't want to go that route. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, barely legal drinking, Shane McMahon. He was a kid. I, I don't I don't know. I spoke with him. He was around. He wasn't a brat. Uh, he was respectful for the guys, you know. Um, he hadn't asserted himself. Like I said. He was he was really young and he wasn't really much you know he was he was just standing around watching at the time, so I really had no no. Uh, he just seemed like a good kid. Uh, Greg Garnier. He was all right. Um, you know, working in a huge shadow, was a good uh, good performer, good guy. Uh, it's hard, you know, when you're one of those guys, you know. It, Mike Graham, another one. When when you you know your your dad's the boss, it's kind of hard. It's hard to uh, hard to get over with the guys, you know, because you know you're not one of the you you want to be one of the guys, but you're not really, you know. You're you're still office, and you and you you're office and you're green. So that's you know you got two strikes on you, right there. But he was he was a good guy. We I went we ran around, uh, went out a few nights. He you know, I was uh, in Minneapolis and a few places. He was a good time. It turned out to be a hell of a worker. Um, another guy that, that wasn't into bodies, so he, he remained on the kind of lean side. But you know, he was 
his daddy it was his daddy's football. Yeah. So he got to play with as much as he wanted. Yeah. He, he wasn't quite a daddy said sell. Like, uh, was it George Goulas? Or was it Nick Goulas? I no, it was George Goulas, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we have J uh, Chief J Strongbow. Oh, uh, I, you know, boring. I don't have a lot of, <laughs> I don't have a lot of bad things to say about a lot of these guys. Uh, Jay was a, he was a, he was an office agent, and, and he'd work, you know, he'd, he'd work matches as as well, but he, he took care of the, uh, took care of the locker rooms, took care of the office. Uh, not much in the promos, but, but you know, it was around uh, giving out finishes and. Uh, one of the uh, an agent on the a road agent, good guy. Never kept himself, you know. He wasn't uh, not a drinker, not 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 a not a out at night guy, you know. Very quiet. When I knew him, I, he was you know older by the time I met him. Hmm. So maybe earlier he, he was alone. Uh, Norman Frederick Charles the Third. Which one's that? Uh, Royal Kangaroos. I think he teamed with Jonathan Boyd for a oh, while. Oh, I didn't. Uh... I didn't know. I, I little spent some time with John Boyd. I didn't know those guys real well, the Kangaroos. I didn't. Uh, they were, they spent more time in Detroit, and um, I think we're in uh, San Francisco for a little while. I, I didn't. I didn't know those gentlemen very well. Okay. They, they seemed like good guys. I I never heard anything bad about them. Yeah, uh, he's rapping Manchester for me as well, so that's good. Uh, yeah. Joe Laduke. Great guy, great guy. Um, we had a we had a crew in Florida. There was Joe, King Curtis, Killer Khan. Oh, who are the other heels? But we had a we had a great crew. We um, we we we, we chartered planes every to, to get around Florida, West Palm Beach, and did a two two hour trips. And uh, on Sundays we had a double trip. Uh, Jacksonville in the afternoon, Orlando in the evening. So everybody's wife or girlfriend would cook a dish, and we everybody take on. We had our twin engine beaches that we take off and make the towns with because it, traveling was hard, and we didn't we didn't have to. We were top guys who we were making money, and you know we could and we had the, the planes wired. But we we'd have a big uh, blowout, all kinds of food and stuff. Remember the Briscoes used to sneak up by the window. Okay, and we pass them plates of food for lunch, rather than go, them going out to eat. You know, they knew where the they knew which side the, the bread bread was buttered on. You know, <laughs> Japanese food, French. Uh, Joe was cooking uh, uh, Canadian arroz. He'd bring he'd bring a whole crock pot with him. We had a good time. You know, old days. Uh, Doctor D, Dave Schultz. Didn't know him that well. Didn't know him that well. Uh, was all right. He was good. Um, yeah, rugged guy. Talked a lot. You know, um, like I said, wasn't close to him. Didn't know him that well. Uh, there's that Stossel thing. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I was there that night. It was a, it was a punk shot, but but uh, everybody loved it. You know, they wanted to see. Everybody was happy to see Stossel get, get slapped like that. <laughs> was uh, so, yeah. did, did your boy Fuji was he winding up the situation a little bit because in the in the in the shot where Stossel yeah. gets a smack. You can just see Fuji go, just yeah, ripping his head off. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he had to. I'm sure he, he was. He's no. He's never a shrinking violet. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> he's a. Uh, he's really conspicuous by his presence in the back. <laughs> the back there. Uh, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, he's actually said very nice. Th or he had said very nice things about you. He was very complimentary about you. I I got along with him. He we just come into the territory. He was uh, he would travel with his wife, but they'd work out and we we're always working out. And he uh, I, I was I was going headed towards babyface then anyway. But I never worked with him and uh, he he hung out with the the bulldogs a lot. So and I I was I hung out with the bulldogs. So you know got to know him through through them and, and he was a good guy. He he was. Uh, I guess there's you know, a lot of things you crit criticize about him. He might have gone a little nuts later with that, his warrior gimmick and stuff. But uh, in the early years, he, he, he was you know pretty fun and pretty down to earth. Maniac in the road. 
<laughs> in what sense? Oh, I mean, one time we, we were in Tallahassee coming from the airport to the just the hotel and he's slamming the brake, slamming on the gas and slamming on the brakes and you know, it's like a, it was like a car chase. Like, like, like the, you know, nobody chasing us, you know, <laughs> like cops. And, the, and then we we're, the, were left for the building here. They left for the building in the evening. And I'll walk. We were in a couple blocks away. And I could hear ur, ah, ur, screeching and tearing off all, you know, had four blocks to go, you know. It wasn't like it was a journey. <laughs> what was he trying to achieve? I don't know. Flat tire? <laughs> <laughs> Where the brakes out? Who knows? <laughs> well, they say uh, there's no car faster than a rental car when it's not your tyres. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was it. Man. Uh, two more. Uh, Rene Goulet. A good guy. He was in uh, Minneapolis uh, working when I first the first started being snooker. We had a big long trip up to Winnipeg in the car one night. He was singing uh, French French songs and there. Drinking uh, red red mountain water, uh, strawberry hill wine or something, and uh, drove all the way from North Dakota to uh, to Winnipeg with him, and uh, had, had a good. He was a good guy. Then then later he took over as uh, became an agent. He was um, well liked, obviously by the McMahons. They brought him back a couple times. He I think he had a couple tag belts and uh, you know was around, and then eventually became an agent then. He just passed away a couple of years ago. Yeah, appara- uh, yeah. Apparently, no one even knew for like a year. It was yeah, kept so secret. Nobody heard about him for 10, 20 years, and all of a sudden, he, it was learned that he passed. And um, it's got to be, it's got to be the final one, the Iron Sheik. Ah, baby. He wasn't that. He was in that crew with the Patera and Flair, and. Uh, Bruggers, Brunzel, and Ganya. He was part of the. He was part of that crew. What an athlete he was. Uh, that um, Brett Azar, the guy that's playing him on the Young Rock, the movie. You probably don't know. There's a, a TV series out now uh, in America. I, I've, uh, I've I've actually written a book about the Rock oh. recently, so I, I know a bit, I know quite a lot about the Rock at the moment. Yeah, that's just come out, hasn't it? Yeah, he looks and he he picked up a lot of mannerisms and stuff, but he. Uh, Broke into the business. He was a wrestling coach, uh, Olympic wrestler from Iran, um, bodyguard to the Shaw. And uh, when the Ayatollah came in, he had to get the hell out of there. But uh, he was uh, bodyguard to the Shaw. Uh, great. Uh, I think even the guys that they you'd bring to the barn to stretch him couldn't stretch him. The, the, the yeah, Hodges and the, uh, Joe Scarpellos, even Robinson, he said, couldn't. Uh, but uh, he was, yeah. I had good fun. I had fun with Cosgrove, and um, stupid he wasn't. He would, he could act stupid. I don't know. I got you know, English. I, he could probably speak English better than you and I put together, you know. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't understand what the, you know. And he would get, you know, he was just, uh well, he was an iron man. Yeah, he was just uh, always drinking a beer. Always, we're in Toronto. I was doing some stuff for Ghana, and after I left WWF, and we were way up in Ontario in the snow, and went across the street from a hotel to get breakfast, and you know, eight, nine, and ten o'clock in the morning, says uh, the, he ordered naturally orders a beer for breakfast, and then you know, well, Canada, they they got to keep a beer someplace warm because it'll freeze. If you put it outside in the snow and stuff, it'll all burn. And so I guess they just put the beer in the cooler and it just brings them a beer and it wasn't cold enough. So, right, waiters, come, come here. Yeah, I think we are warm like piss outside <laughs> snow. Up to Sheik's ass. Bring me cold beer. Yeah. There's always something, always something in Danny with I was about to Lanny Poffo maybe like two months ago, and he said there's always a weird thing that Sheik would always say with ladies, uh, you want to make arch with Sheik? Oh, yeah, make arch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was quite the uh, Persian lover. <laughs> was he actually the Persian lover, or did he just get t- turned down a lot? 
I, uh, I don't know if he was looking for gimmick or women. I, it's hard to say. He was always, <laughs> you know, always had his little green bag and uh, well, I don't know, who knows what the hell he was up to. <laughs> Didn't he have a bag, man? No, no, he was, uh, I guess he tried to drop it on a few guys a few times. <laughs> <laughs> going through customs or going through other people, you put his stuff in somebody else's suitcase a few times. But that's the word anyway. 